Excellent. Chris, back over to you. Sorry about that. No worries. Thanks, Rebecca. I appreciate it. And uh, before I jump in, I also wanted to ask if there are any questions so far on what you've heard of the overview. Okay. Hearing none, we'll jump right in. Next slide. Great. So um, Chris and, and Rebecca have done an excellent job of kind of setting the framework to this uh, of what we're going to begin now on public alert and warning event symbols. Uh, one thing I want to really reiterate here is we're starting from scratch. This is the first go around uh, to bring some standardization into the mapping world for this. And as Rebecca highlighted, this will also hopefully go far beyond just uh, the map page or the plot sheet. And, um, and really gain some traction with that. So that being said, we have a clean slate. We're starting from scratch. Um, a lot of the other groups have the opportunity to be able to have um, either ANSI 415 standards or UN OCHA or NAPSIC uh, standards to kind of start with. And so what you'll be seeing as we go through this is kind of a mashup of these concepts and ideas going forward. So we're really anxious to hear your feedback about that. Um, first thing we did was we wanted to really come up with a standardized shape because what we're finding is over um, large areas, um, looking at the entire United States or globally, we need to quickly be able to recognize what that uh, symbol is representing, whether that's uh, an incident or hazard or an alert. And so we've come up with a triangle. Uh, giving it that unique shape and making that a dedicated shape so that if you see a diamond, you're knowing that it's an incident. If you're seeing a triangle, hopefully you'll know that it's an alert or a warning. Um, again, uh, being able to see that at a high level, being able to see where these events are occurring and how they're occurring. So next slide. So going down into that, we're starting to see we can leverage the, um, you'll hear a lot repeated in this presentation today, really leveraging the digital Zoom capability. What we're finding is the user can intuitively dig for more information, zooming in, searching for things. But also when we represent that on a plot sheet, large scale versus small scale, we can start coming in tighter to the area impacted and leveraging that ability to do so, whether we're seeing it on the screen digitally, whether we're actually producing a plot sheet, we can change that icon or modify it and give it additional information that reveals more to what's going on. So um, Chris Rogers continues to do a great job of keeping us in the lane and, and helping us remember things like we don't always live in a color world. When color is unavailable, these symbols continue to have to be discernible in black and white. So you're seeing an illustration here of zooming in a little bit and having that diamond start revealing uh, the exclamation point and that highlighting the fact that this is indeed something that needs to be paid attention to. Uh, you see that if the, em if the emblem or the symbol is in black and white, still the same thing, very discernible there. Okay, next slide. We do have the ability, though, to start leveraging color. Um, as more of our maps are moving to the digital world uh, and being used digitally, whether that's in a web application, on a desktop application, or mobile, application, um, we're seeing that a lot of people are, are really, there's an uptick in the use of digital maps. Also color plots, uh, color plotters are far more available now than they have been in the past. So when we have the ability to be able to use color, do we want to? And this is a question that you all would help answer. Um, is it important to give either severity or status through color for a public alert or warning event? Um, I've given some examples here, and they are strictly just food for thought. So if we want to move up through a steady state warning into an, a watch stage uh, of an alert and into a severe stage, these are just some examples to get you thinking in that direction uh, that helps us realize that we can use color when it is available. Next slide. So now the fun starts. Um, looking at combining the good work that's going before us in the hazards, uh, natural hazards, human caused hazards, there's a lot of work going on in the other groups and I encourage you if you've not been chiming in on those groups and you're interested in getting involved in that area as well, 
please do so. NAPTIC is providing all of these uh, virtual tag-up calls uh, in the recorded version, so don't feel like you're behind. If you haven't participated, you can go online and listen to those. If you want to engage in those, Chris Rogers is handling the uh, natural events and the human cause events. Uh, Stephen Polakoff that's on this call is handling the special events. Um, so any, any of those that you want to chime in on. Because those, those are really our root graphics that we're going to start talking about here. And you see something that's pretty common to most of us, especially in the southeast, and that's a hurricane emblem. So we've combined now our uh, public alert and warning event uh, symbol, the treatment, the triangle, whether it's color, black and white, or a, a varying shade of color, with that hazard symbol, and this case being um, hurricane. And I think it's just on my screen, but at the bottom of the slide, you'll see um, I gave a couple of variations there. You know, do we want to use the symbol behind um, the, the triangle with the exclamation point, or do we want to incorporate it all together? Um, some of us on the team are leaning toward incorporation because it's cleaner on the map and it's very intuitive as that symbol moves down. But again, that's why you're here today. We really want to hear back from you to let us know. Um, are there any questions so far? Okay, hearing none, uh, we'll move to the next slide. So again, as we start moving in tighter, because that's intuitive, whether we're sending plot sheets out in the field or whether we're um, viewing it on our own digitally and being able to zoom in in an area, when we're digging for information, we're trying to find out more about it. So now I've seen there's an alert, a warning event in my area. I started to zoom in and I can see the status of it uh, or the severity of it. I can begin to see that it is a hurricane alert or warning. And now I can see that we can combine these with the area of impact boundaries. And this is really, um, I think, going to be a very powerful tool for us to be able to define how we go forward with it. Uh, one of the other groups is working on uh, line symbols and polygon uh, symbology so that we can begin to define these boundaries in a very unique and intuitive way. Sometimes they're just simply county boundaries. Sometimes they may be fire boundaries or other pre-described things. But when we combine the symbol itself with the area of impact, we begin to get a bigger, better picture here. And also it's important um, to know that a lot of alerts and warnings already come out in this way. When, it, when we're notified of a tornado warning or a hurricane warning or evacuation, uh, we begin to see the areas that are impacted by that. So it's pretty intuitive as we're going. Next slide. So here's just another example of that. Um, we're working in the line and polygon uh, group, and I'll recruit you for that if you have interest in that area. Again, line symbology and uh, polygon symbology is something that we've not crossed that bridge before until this phase of the work. And there's no previous work done for that yet to set standards for that. So again, I'm recruiting heavily here. Uh, if you'd like to <laughs> join in that group as well, it does overlap with this group, so your voice can be heard there as well. Again, leveraging that digital Zoom capability, think about that and how symbols can change, how they can be um, more intuitive, how they can be more informative based on the level of detail. You see down in the lower right corner uh, the example of an incident uh, being a diamond shape solid color at a very small scale looking at the entire United States or a hemisphere, you can see where all of the events are occurring. And as you zoom in, you begin to see that that's a fire event. Uh, as you zoom in even further, you can then de determine that it is a wildland fire. Um, the, the illustration on the left portrays that the alert and warning uh, for the area, the fire boundary uh, being, in this case, a wildland fire. Uh, could be a structure fire, so that, that that tree in the middle of the emblem would be replaced with a house in that case. So again, it's trying to utilize across the spectrum, whether it's a hazard or an incident or operational um, activity or an alert and warning. We want to be able to be intuitive with these graphics so that as they come across the, the user, it just becomes automatic for them. Okay, next slide.
All right, so here comes the fun part. <laughs> so again, um, the the emphasis here is what does the treatment look like? Is it intuitive? Is it conveying the fact that it is a public alert and warning? Do we want to convey the severity or the status of the warning? And then the icon in the middle is is really an illustration of what's going on in the other groups and, and establishing those root graphics. So our focus is not so intently on the icon in the middle in this group as it is, does the top icon really help you understand that it is a warning and that it's something we should pay attention to? Uh, Chris Rogers, uh, I'll pl give a plug again for your groups if you want to get involved in how a child abduction emergency uh, root graphic looks. Um, he's your man. Uh, sign up for his group, and he can help with that. So these, again, are those top 15 or 16 um, priorities that we were given to start focusing on, and then we'll move uh, down the line. I will draw attention to the one on the bottom. Uh, this, is, this is, as you saw, that standardized uh, emergency alert notification. If it is presidential, does that need to look different? You know, that's something that I would also put before you. A, a presidential warning uh, may need to carry some different um, symbology to, to really emphasize that. Okay, next slide. Yeah. Great. Um, and just, I, sorry, Chris, I just want to raise a couple of points for just, you know, discussion as we move through here. Um, oh, please, the, please. the two that you see on this slide that we haven't previously gotten stakeholder input on are the civil emergency message as well as the emergency alert notification. So obviously blizzard warning and dust storm were part of the natural hazards. Child abduction was part of the human cause technological group. So from an icon standpoint, uh, we've received input on, on those three, but the two that we really haven't yet are that civil emergency message and the emergency notification. So, you know, right, and the, you know, the I think, civil you emergency know. comes from the ANSI 415 standard, the, the FGDC Homeland Security Working Group, and that's something that's actually changed, I think, even recently to this icon that you see there. But again, it's, it's kind of, it's, right now it's open for, for feedback and discussion. We encourage that. Yeah, I think that's a great point. So this was the case where we were able to pull a icon from an existing standard. Um, you know, I will say it may or may not already a, and then B, it may actually be effective. Um, and, you know, with these new ones in particular, with the civil emergency message and the emergency alert notification. So I'd be, I, you know, I think I want to make sure that we can have an interactive there. So I'd like to, you know, kind of ask the folks on the call, stakeholders, what do you think, um, you know, overall about the framework and the treatment that Chris has uh, presented to us in terms of consistency and the shape and outline for public alert and warning symbols um, would be the first question. Then the second question is what do you guys think about the icons used for those two types of um, event codes, civil emergency message and emergency alert notification? Any, any thoughts or feedback from the stakeholders on the call? Yeah, Rebecca, this is Chris. I don't know if it was just my connection, but you got really garbled for a little bit there. Yeah, I, I think okay, if you turned away from Can you hear me the... clear now? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. So what I was doing is for to kind of take a pause and have a discussion with the stakeholders to ask, answer two questions. The first question is, what do you guys think about the um, what do you guys think about the general uh, standardized treatment and framework um, that Chris has proposed for the public alert and warning event symbols, which is this. Essentially, that this triangle that can I, with a very thick border around it. Um, so that's the first question for you all, as stakeholders: is what do you think about the icons specifically for civil emergency message and emergency alert notification? Uh, 
This is Chris. I, I, uh, Rogers, I actually, so I, Chris Johnson and I talked about this quite a bit. And uh, as far as the bottom symbol, it, it's, um, it really kind of is a, a cousin to the exclamation point of the catch-all with the diamond. And so I, I, I'm pretty partial to that. Um, and also it's just a generic uh, hazard identify, identifying icon for pretty much everything. So I, I think that's great. I, I've always had struggles with the um, the little man with the hands up symbol, though, and I, but I, I I can't give you a, a an answer to what I would suggest would be a better option. Hi, this is Hans from FEMA's Outreach um, in IPAWS. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about is the civil emergency message and its comparison to emergency alert notification. The emergency alert notification is, I think, going to be 99.9% .9 presidential. Uh, so there is no differentiation whether it's the EAN is not presidential or not, because this particular code is only used when a, a nationwide alert is sent out. Um, but that would be a really imminent threat to the entire nation itself, um, which is not likely um, to be issued. Um, and we wouldn't can, can fathom what kind of disaster that may be. But as far as the civil emergency message is being used by currently being issued alerts by local emergency managers, um, these can range from toxic water to a shooter on campus to um, anything that the local emergency manager seems fit that is uh, a danger to the safety of the public, not that is not weather related. Um, I, I would in my opinion, would believe that the exclamation mark would better fit the civil emergency message and um, perhaps something more of a symbol that identifies EAN as a national threat, uh, I believe would kind of a symbol would probably fit EAN more. Yeah. I think that that's really helpful feedback, Han. So basically what you're suggesting is that we take the use of the exclamation mark and use that as the icon for the civil emergency message, and then we really emphasize this the symbol for presidential emergency alert notification and, and something else um, be defined for that. Is that right? Uh, yes, I, be I believe that's right. Uh, Mark, do you have any thoughts uh, in terms of EAN? Uh, yeah, generally I concur with what you said. Basically, EAN, uh, knock on wood, it'll it'll never happen. You'll never see one come across. And that symbol with the exclamation point seems seems kind of like a good catch-all. And as there is really, the civil emergency message is kind of a catch-all. It's not really mm -hmm. specific as to as to what kind of incident would uh, drive an emergency manager to use this type of uh, alert message. Whereas the rest of them. You know, it's pretty, even the titles are pretty self-explanatory as to what they mean. Civil emergency message is a little, a little more of a catch-all. It's kind of vague. Um, so I think the, using the exclamation point for that event, co that, that uh, event, sim um, event type makes a lot more sense. Great. I mean, I think, you know, Chris J., I'll, I'll defer to you. I think that's an, a pretty easy change. Um, I, you know, I think it would leave us with a void in terms of what we do for presidential emergency alert notifications. But I think we need to do some some creative thinking uh, around that. But I also, you know, certainly welcome any thoughts and ideas from other practitioners on the call today. Now, that's absolutely invaluable feedback. I appreciate that, Hans, and, and you, Mark, as well. That really helps us understand. And I couldn't agree more. I think if that local EM manager is the one. Um, putting out that civil emergency, then definitely the exclamation part is, is going to cover uh, what that needs to cover for that. And again, to your point, uh, Rebecca, you know, something that's going to happen, hopefully never, uh, we want to make sure that we pay special attention to that as well and give it a very unique treatment. That's really helpful. Thank you. This is Hans from iPods. I just make, 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 perhaps I make a suggestion for the EAN since it is presidential. Um, I've had suggestions um, of having the icon of the eagle and um, the presidential steel, the, the eagle holding the arrows and the um, olive branch, 
that that could be a suggestion because that is most closely related to a message from the president. Absolutely. Uh, In fact, I'm I'm glad you said that, Hans, because as I was uh, writing notes about this, I kind of sketched out that little eagle. I think that's exactly right. Great. Thank you. Yeah, and I think also, you know, just from the, the standpoint, you know, the, a symbol of a presidential emergency alert notification is not something that would typically be hand-drawn onto a map. So, you know, I don't think that needs to drive a requ our requirement for the development of that icon. Um, so I just want to make mention of that. It's certainly something that would be used in, you know, a digital environment, be that, you know, the issuance of the notification and also um, by any kind of web-based or computer digital-based mapping application. Uh, very good point. Any other feedback from anyone else on the call? Hey, hey Chris, this is uh, uh, Dennis Gusty. Uh, I was wondering, do you, since these messages are ultimately going out to the public, do you bring any of uh, the public fo folks into your stakeholder groups as like a focus group or anything, I guess, to get their feedback? So yeah, I can answer to that question, Dennis. That was not within the scope when we set forth to do the um, to to work on this phase. So okay. what we're looking at, at at this current phase, since this is the first time of anything's been developed for priority alert and warning symbols, is we're starting first with where we're at to get a level of a prototype for these initial drafts that will then be to you guys. I know, you know, we've. We've raised it. I know Hans has raised it in, in conversations with David Lilly at DHS about potentially having focus groups with the general public. That just wasn't within scope of what we had the, the, the ability to support for this current phase, but it's absolutely something that we can look at doing in future phases. Uh, okay. All right. Thank you. Sure. Uh, this is Mike. I, I may have missed this. I apologize if I did. Um, is there a di uh, difference between the triangle and the, the uh, diamond that was uh, shown on the previous slide or, slide or a couple back? Yeah, so the diamond, Mike, is representing an, an actual um, hazard or an incident. <laughs> Wait, it's got a lot of background noise. Yeah, whoever, if, if, someone has, if someone has some background noise, could you just mute your phone, please? Oh, there we Great. go. Not here. <laughs> okay, Mike, you still there? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. So um, in, in Chris's group, working with the natural hazards and the man-made uh, hazards, they're using the diamond symbol. And I probably should have went into the, the um, fire symbol that I gave a, an example of earlier and created those as alert and warnings, because uh, that's probably what threw you off. But we're trying to get these very unique, distinct shapes so that if we're looking at it at a small scale, possibly the whole United States, we're just seeing the shape and we realize that that's an incident or that's a uh, public alert and warning. Chris Rogers, you want to add anything to that? No, and actually the, the diamond shape more geared towards uh, responder information. Um, and we kind of wanted to keep the, the diamond and the triangle a little bit separate in the sense that, uh, for example, a hazard might be something that we're going to see and deal with in the responder world, but in the public world, we just want people to avoid it. So I think we, the thought is, is that we kind of have a, a different path for roughly the same information. But Mike, if you're looking at a map at a legend and you're seeing um, diamond shapes and um, triangle shapes, we also want you to realize that those are, are two distinct things so that when you zoom in, you're starting to get the feeling that this is an alert or warning and this is an incident. But, but Chris yeah. is right. You know, these are going to be somewhat segregated naturally by who is looking at the map. Okay, yeah, no, I think that makes a lot of sense. It's, uh, you know, if you take a look at a triangle, you know that it's an alert or a warning. Uh, if it's something different than that, you know that you've got to take a different course of action. That's exactly right. Exactly right. Okay, Thank others you. that like to chime in at this point, you're welcome. 
Yeah. All right. Hearing none, we'll go to the next well, slide. Well, uh, hey, hey, Chris, this is oh, Bruce. Go ahead, Bruce. Um, yeah, so I agree with everything that was said on the civil emergency message. Uh, I really, when I first looked at the little stick figure, uh, the black stick figure with his hands up or her hands up, I thought, huh. Uh, you know, think back to Ferguson or some of the other incidents. It's probably not the best symbol we could have. <laughs> um, uh, but um, uh, about commentary, are, are you going to get into uh, like the dust storm warning? Because when I look at that particular symbol, I get the image of wind out of it, but I don't get dust out of it. Um, hey, Bruce, remember, yes. we weren't planning to go into the iconology of okay. those icons that were developed in the in the respective groupings today. Um, okay, well, then, so, then that's fine. Let's move on then. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I just I want to be cognizant of folks' time and, and, and the fact that we had hashed through a lot of modifications to those and sent out feedback forms for all of those. But... Um, you know, we will be issuing a feedback form with all of these on it as well um, immediately following today's call. Um, so, I mean, that's where we had gotten to based on all of the feedback that had been received for blizzard, child abduction, and dust storm. And, and take into account, too, when you see the feedback form, this goes for the whole group, you know, our primary focus right now is is public alert and warning. Are we conveying what we need to with the treatment that's there? But if you do have comments that you want to make on the iconology itself, uh, you know, I don't, I don't see any harm in putting that on the feedback form. Uh, we'll mm -hmm. pass it to the, the appropriate group. But do keep in mind that, that really, you know, we're really about um, the treatment and are we conveying what we need to and using the proper treatment and modifiers that we have going on here. Okay, so the next slide. So um, again, moving down that same uh, vein of conversation, we just wanted to give you the idea of are these icons easily recognizable with this treatment? Uh, does it make some t sort of sense to you? And again, realizing that these icons in a digital sense, the symbols themselves will carry additional information. So if it is a, a, a weather alert, alert, there's no reason why that attribution cannot be attached to that symbol as well. But just for easily uh, being recognized that, yes, I understand it's a warning and uh, in these different categories, it's really the, the, uh, the idea we're trying to get across here. I think hurricane is probably the best example of that. I don't know if it's because I've spent my entire life in the southeast and I'm very familiar with the symbol. But that symbol gets exercised on our road signage for evacuation routing. Um, it gets exercised on the weather maps that uh, the Hurricane Center puts out. So it's, it's, it's again, very socialized and recognized across um, um, different boundaries of understanding. Any comment on this slide from anyone? What about tornado warning? It's on the next Dawn slide. from the Midwest. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Don. Yeah, we're we're all about the tornado warning down here too, for sure. Okay. Next slide. Great. Um, so just keep in mind, folks, that these icons were the ones that actually were the resulting products from the natural hazards uh, group A, um, who was working on the symbol. So after many iterations, that was what we got to for those. Um, excellent. Okay, and the only um, the only one that's not come out of another group is the shelter in place warning. So I'd really love to hear from the iPods folks on that as well. Um, some some feedback. Um, again, that's that's the iconology side, but you know we want to make sure that we get this right and going forward. And Don, there's your tornado warning. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Hey, Chris, can you indicate if the shelter-in-place um, warning icon came from an existing standard? Did not. It, it did was, not. Uh, okay. Did not, yeah. Great. And what about on the law enforcement warning, just for visibility? Mm, this, that is a symbol that's out there in the UN OCHA world, uh, but when Excellent. you say law enforcement, there's a lot of aspects to that. 
you know, what okay. what is a, a law enforcement warning. So maybe, you know, again, the iPod folks, we'd love to hear if you have any feedback on that as well. That would be really helpful. Yeah, so I think this is a good point for a discussion on, on those in particular and any of the other ones. So kind of putting this out to the rest of also the full group here that we've got on, on the call. Do you think they work? Are they intuitive enough? Um, have you seen anything better being used? Hey, this is Hans from iPods. Um, I just want to make a comment of what um, you guys mentioned earlier, that somebody from uh, the southeast was able to recognize the hurricane warning based on the symbols that the Department of Transportation has throughout the United States. And I think that's a very good place to start uh, in terms of uh, most people recognize things that are uh, existing symbols that are out there. Um, so if there are a possibility of certain certain event codes that match those that the Department of Transportation has for symbols on, on, on the road, um, they absolutely would make a bigger impact on the public because the public does recognize those things much uh, easier. Uh, so having going back from, from the drawing board, um, in a comment about the law enforcement warning and the shelter in place warning, I, I do like them. Um, to me, they do resonate with me immediately. Um, uh, an example of the shelter in place warning that I'm familiar with here is the ones I've seen out here in our buildings that designated as a shelter in place area. Uh, but, like I said, most of the general public will recognize a, a, the symbol based on what they've seen somewhere else. But so far, these are really great examples. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Hans. That's very helpful. And you're right. You know, the DOT road signage, you know, we use that as a deep resource because they're, they, you know, you drive by them all the time. They become intuitive geographically if your area is typically impacted that. The landslide warnings, you know, rock slides, things like that, um, we definitely want to pay close attention to those in the alert and warning world. I think what's interesting also, um, Hans, and for the folks on the alert and warning side, is something that we've also been taking a look at is are these, a lot of these symbols used beyond the United States? And I think that's a good, that's a question that we ask for a lot of them. I can tell you with, you know, landslide, with hurricane, um, with several of them, um, is that they are the same symbols used for the same things in most of the world. And what's good about that is, your public alert and warnings are going to reach populations that, you know, m maybe, you know, newly migrated populations may not be, um, you know, may not have the literacy, may not have English as a first language, but at least knowing that they're well promulgated, the icons around the world, and if they are ones that are, have not been promulgated, then are they intuitive enough to resonate with the general public? Yeah, absolutely, and I'll put the example, uh, you know, the internal group had a lot of wailing and gnashing of teeth over the earthquake symbol because for a long time in the United States, it was basically the seismic uh, signal, and everybody thought, well, that's, that looks like an earthquake, and uh, with the um, proclivity for earthquakes that we've had in the last couple of years, you know, the symbol of the concentric circles that you saw in the previous slide is really resonating globally and, and becoming recognized on news stories and maps. And so it's being socialized a lot more. So, um, you know, we've, we've gone back and forth in the, the natural hazards group and have, have currently uh, using the concentric circle. But again, we'd love to hear your feedback um, on that. It's so valuable to us to hear all these different perspectives. And I'll go ahead and say now as well, you know, the treatment that we're prescribing here with this thick border um, in a color or black and white, it seems um, to be from a design or aesthetic aspect much easier to deal with. You know, we looked at solid borders in the background, but then you're looking at knockout shapes if it's black and white, right? So if you have more than just one or two little lines in your symbol, it starts to get a little um, more confusing if it's a solid. So in other words, if we're using red to indicate severity or status, and all of a sudden we're not using the border, the line border to do that, we're using a solid background, 
it gets a little harder to recognize the icon inside. But, you know, we'd love to see if you have things you want to submit on the feedback form as examples. That's what this is all about in getting this engagement from, from our stakeholders, from you guys. Okay, next slide. All right, so these are the things that we've talked about today, really looking at a unique and a distinctive symbol, something that's easily recognizable at a small scale. So if you're looking over a wide area, you get an idea of the concentration of these um, warnings that are going out. Uh, as we zoom down in, we can start to get more detail of, of status or severity using color or depicting it that way. Um, zooming in further gives us uh, more information that's revealed upon Zoom, so you're starting to see the type of event, whether it's a child abduction, law enforcement, hurricane, uh, wildland fire, um, we're starting to see that. And I've, I've put a little bit of an illustration up there of some uh, attribution with the symbol, so if it's a, a hurricane warning, perhaps something from the National Weather Service will come across or through IPAWS, uh, the CAT protocol will come across. Um, you know, we're hoping that's the direction that we end up going in. And then being able to leverage that digital Zoom capability, whether we're using uh, digital maps on a screen or whether we're zooming in and gaining that information of a polygon uh, for our plot sheet, being able to see the areas impacted. Um, so that's kind of a status overview of, of uh, everything we talked about today, and I'll open it up for questions or comments. Great, thank you, Chris. Welcome. I think um, I, another question I have, and this actually goes back to the, the color ramp, so to speak. Um, if you don't mind, I'll actually toggle back there, if that's okay with everyone. Yeah, that'd be great. Sure. It'll take me just a second here to get back to the right one. So one of the things that was raised is having the, this color ramp, and I thought this was interesting and it would be beneficial, I think, for us to have some discussion with everyone who's on the call today about does it make sense to have um, some sort of color variation, and I think this could, you know, at least from this, ultimately the shape and the line and the general treatment still conveys what it's intended to convey. Um, but having, using color to indicate, you know, being in a warning stage versus a watch stage versus an all clear steady state, I, I think has some beneficial implications certainly from a public safety mapping perspective, but may also lend itself well in, 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 in with the needs um, by the public and alert and warning folks, because I know you do differentiate in some cases between warning and watch, and this may actually help to achieve that. So take, you know, tornado, for example, um, or flash flood, or et cetera. So, um, I, you know, I raise that for discussion by everyone, but just want to kind of hear what folks think about the, this proposed um, color ramp in brief, with the red being the warning, the yellow being the watch, and the blue being all clear, steady state. Hey, this is Hans again from iPods. I, I do like them, but I just want to let everybody know um, that for the integrated public alert and warning system, we work closely with National Weather Service and anyone else, um, but we are only issuing severe or warning stages, um, the ones in the red. Okay. Uh, National okay. Weather Service may, may, you know, send out watches and so forth. But right. I wanted to bring up a point. Um, if anybody's played with Google Public Alerts, um, it's basically – shows all the type of incidents that are occurring in the United States, but they're not designated with any sort of icon. It's just by letters. And it, when you hover over your mouse on it, it shows up the severity, the likelihood, and the expiration time. So it's very difficult to see a, a full map of all these things occurring, but you don't know which one is a watch, which is a warning, which one's already expired. So I do really like the color coordination here which really does, um, if I was using a, such a map, I'm able to identify which items, um, which incidents are currently occurring in a large format and uh, something, and other ones are already passed. Mm -hmm. um, because, for example, Google Public Alerts 
maybe like 50 things out there, but half of those things already expired or half of those things are, aren't extreme um, as it, you know, so thank you for pulling that up. This is, yeah, exactly what I was talking about. No, that's super helpful, Hans. And, you know, we've had some discussions internally because we're really trying to think down the road of where we're going with this, you know, more of an immersive map and being able to tie more deeply to the attribution or to the data sets behind the map. So having symbology that's dynamic enough to start changing through that color ramp. So for instance, when a warning is fading off and, and beginning to expire or starting to expire nearing expiration, or when it's ramping up from a steady state to a watch to a warning, you know, really um, leveraging the ability to put that temporal aspect into the attribution or into the data set that affects that icon automatically. So that would be really, really cool for the future. And it's things that, you know, we can play with now and start testing now and then push it back out to you guys and say, hey, do you like this? But, you know, if we go from just primary colors of, of you know, blue, yellow, red, or whatever is determined initially, and then we get these varying shades of ramp so we start understanding what that means. You know, most of us now, you know, we're, <laughs> we're able to, uh, it's always incredibly fascinating to me that how much we can discern the weather from the maps. You know, green is raining and, and yellow is hard rain and orange and, you know, if it gets purple, it gets really scary uh, in a rainstorm <laughs> or a thunderstorm. So, and that's all um, dynamic um, um, visualization. So it's coming off of that data set. So I think it's something that we can really start uh, putting into practice to see how effective it is, because the idea is to take a quick look and get a quick understanding of what's going on and then the ability to drill down and get the detail. So I'm really glad you brought that up. And we need to probably really push, back. <laughs> we yep. need to push back to Google and say, hey, there's some, <laughs> there's some alert warning symbols you need to be using. So <laughs> I yeah, sure that appreciate our feedback. Yeah, Hans, thanks very much for for bringing this to our attention and and to take a look at this. And hey, Chris, this couldn't be any more up your alley. So, right. um, <laughs> this is perfect. You know, the other yeah, the other thing, you know, I think the other category when I was kind of clicking through some of these that I saw besides watch and warning is advisory. So I saw a frost advisory. Um, you know, so so it's something we we might want to take a look at in terms of. How would you, you know, what does that need to be a color of its own? Does it fall under the, the watch? You know, it's not a warning per se, um, but it was an advisory seems to be another category um, kind of within that variation. So anyways, just a, a point for, for feedback. Absolutely. Do any of the other stakeholders on the call have any kind of thoughts on on the the color ramping? Is this something that you, you know, I, you know think about, Mike, on your end at the New Hampshire State Guard, um, and any of your applicants, um, you know, some sort of a color ramp to to show and illustrate that that kind of level of warning or watch um, with some of the things that you guys deal with. Um. I, I like the idea. One of the things that we discovered in monitoring the, um, the QSEC when they did the Capstone 2014 was uh, to be able to have a, um, an overall perspective as to what red, green, and amber uh, meant. And I think if you, if you can kind of keep that generic enough so that anybody taking a look at the, the color ramping, they'll be able to identify that, you know, this is uh, at the lower end, at the middle end, or the high end. I think mm -hmm. that works. Uh, one of the things that we found effective is to, if, if you want to call the colored area as a halo, is that within the first whatever time frame you want to pick out, whether 15 minutes or 20 minutes, that if that's flashing, you know it's a relatively new change that occurred or, mm -hmm. or you know, it, it just occurred. And um, obviously that would have to go into a, uh, a, um, a dynamic map, but I think that that's valuable mm -hmm. as well as you, when you come onto the situation, you know if it's uh, fresh or if it's been uh, there for a little while. Yep. That's interesting. Yeah, and that's but, really uh, going to be fascinating to see, Mike. You know, as we get the basics down and, and things are understandable and black and white and clearly defined, 
uh, and easily recognizable, you know, how many ways can we go with that? You know, because you're exactly mm-hmm. right. Tying it to that temporal data and making it wiggle or flash or jiggle or whatever we need to make it do to get the attention of the people that need to see it, you know, I think that's just an extension of what we're starting to do here now. Yep. I think that, that idea in terms of how we can make this more dynamic too, um, like that, I, I think is really advantageous to this discussion. So, because um, we are seeing, you know, an upward trend in the use of those dynamic features and, and symbols. Absolutely. So feel free to just think, uh, you know, in the future on your feedback forms. You know, no, no idea is really too out there at this point. The, the things are moving just so fast right now. The velocity has picked up so much that we really need that input. We need to be stretching out and thinking about, okay, so we've got this part down. What's next? Great. Any other, and that's something, Chris, I'll make sure that we add a couple of areas in the feedback form to both feedback on the color ramp and then also kind of any dynamic um, kind of features or capab could be achieved through the use of these public alert and warning symbols just to see if we can generate any feedback about from stakeholders on that. Yep, I like it. No, uh, no idea is too outrageous. Absolutely. Is there any other uh, any other folks that are on the call um, that have any inputs or thoughts here from from your experiences? Hey, this is Paul. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Just a <clears throat> just a quick question. What is um, what are our thoughts on standardizing the information in the in the pop-ups as well? When I mean, when we're talking about dynamic maps, to make sure that the mm-hmm. symbology and the language match, because I find that um, often, especially with public maps, that can actually be a source of more confusion than than help. Interesting. That's so, a great um, point. Did the, did the IPOS folks want to tackle that one from your perspective? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, yeah, Hans, yeah, sure. What they're asking is, so if you look here, you know, on the, the Jacksonville, and actually let me pull up that Google Alerts thing really quick, because I think that's a good example. So, bear with me here. Um, Google Public Alerts. Basically what he's asking is when you take something like a Google Public Alerts, right, or any other type of of map that's, you know, used and consumed by the general public, do you standardize the pop-up? So say, you know, the fire chief in Michigan, somebody in the general public is, you know, using that map because maps are commonly used by the public today to informal information. When you click on this, you know that there's a frost advisory in Michigan. Is there going to be any standardization in terms of the actual content within the text boxes that you would click on? Or in the case that hypothetically you would be clicking on the symbol within the map and you click on the symbol like here in Jacksonville and you would see a box come up that would provide you more detailed information. Are we going to include some sort of recommended standard structure and what data fields and maybe there would even be drop downs for some of these things about how okay. you would populate that information? Absolutely. Um, one of the things that IPAWS uses universally is called CAP, Compliant Common Alerting Protocol. Um, it is basically a template which which ask the questions or, um, you know, it's not necessarily fillable, but it'll ask what the likelihood, what type of event code it is, um, how severe, uh, if it's something that's urgent right away. Um, I, I would believe I would actually suggest that it would should follow something similar to the common alerting protocol. And we can talk a little bit more of that um, offline. Uh, actually, Mark, Mark, do you want to go ahead and kind of lay that standard template for a cap? Sure. Um, basically, uh, this, so this is for iPods only, really. Um, 
essentially every alert that comes through IPAWS is going to have some standard uh, fields. Um, for instance, urgency, severity, and certainty. Every single alert will have uh, a, um, I guess, term for urgency. So it could be something that's happening immediately or it's something that could happen in the future. Um, things like that. Severity, how, how severe is the, the incident? It could be extreme, it could be minor, that sort of thing. So every single alert that goes through iPods has these tags. Uh, so th that would be a good thing to include in a pop-up to give you more information about the alert. Okay. Um, and I think that uh, that's what, oh, the, the Google Alerts page is gone, but um, I think they're using something similar to that. Um, if you bring that up and, and click on one of them. Yeah, so urgency, severity, and certainty. I, I guess that's it. Um, yeah, those are the urgency, severity, and certainty tags. So that would be a good one um, to standardize on. There are, no, there are a number of other fields in the, in the standard message format that could be included in there, but I think uh, generally the way that Google's doing it makes sense. You know, what is it? How long is it good for? When does it, when does it expire? What's the urgency, severity, and certainty? And then just uh, some, some prose that comes out of the message to say what it is. Great. I think that's something we could easily take a look at. So, um, you know, definitely thanks for the, the input there. And, I, you know, I guess, you know, my question kind of back to Paul and the others is, obviously, you know, um, many p maps used by, you know, public information maps put out by emergency management and local agencies, um, you know, contain these sorts of pop-ups. And I guess my question to you guys is, do you see this propagation of the CAP kind of general structure and, and, and the tags already in use, or is this something that we would need to kind of raise more awareness about and, and focus on so that we can, you know, there's no harm in achieving greater consistency even if they are not necessarily IPAWS um, issued alerts and warnings, but just from the general sense of it, like how Google has done. I think one of the key things is then, you know, and this I know it starts to stray from symbology, it's just then the, the attributes in the layer <clears throat> should represent mm -hmm. the standards. So, yep. um, because in this case, right, the pop-up is pretty and driven by HTML, but if it's going to be coming from any sort of GIS data source, it has to be present in the, in the attributes. So how likely, how soon, how severe, that needs yep. to be part of the data model. So. Okay. Excellent. Hey, Chris Rogers, did you get that? <laughs> Yeah, okay. It's probably just something to keep in the documentation. Yeah, it is, but we actually are developing a, um, a, so a couple of data models and some templates around some of this as well as part of the implementation guide. So I think this is a great kind of piece of feedback that we can make sure gets brought into there. Um, and, and I, you know, in general, as much as we can kind of help to achieve greater consistency and propagation of, of this, of the standards as it makes sense for these types of, of applications, all the better. Yeah, Rebecca, this is Chris Rogers. I got that information. And I want to thank for the group is I'm working on a, um, couple fields in the attributes, one would be a, the advisory level, and the other would be like the risk, uh, a risk level, and also the severity after the event starts happening, so um, feedback's appreciated on that. And one, um, actually, just a thought, perhaps one really important thing to add to that information would be what action should a person take, and that's one of the mm -hmm. uh, things that CAP does cover is that um, okay. What what action? Because I mean, they see that alert. What is general public? Most general people won't know what to do. That's a good point. Okay, that's a great point, and and that kind of goes to our intent and desire to help make symbols more actionable. So I think if we can indicate that in a standardized way, that would be really really nice. Excellent. Any other feedback for folks on this piece of it? All right. Chris, um, Chris J, is there anything else on your end that you want to kind of bring to light or kind of, you know, vet with the stakeholders that are on today's call? Um, any other 
focus areas for our discussion today? You know, I think this has really exceeded my expectation. You guys have done a great job at, at thinking down the road as well. You know, when we put these things together, it's so easy to get caught up in the iconology and say, you know, I don't like this or I want this to change when we're losing sight of, of everything else. And you guys have done an excellent job at, at really focusing on our task at hand. But even going beyond that, you know, so, you know, the, the last discussion point we just had, I'm very excited about because we can start uh, integrating that into our testing, into our data models so that it becomes the norm. And that's the whole idea about building standards is putting the things that are useful forward so people will adopt them and pick them up and start using them. So I, I'm just really happy with uh, the way this group is, is responding and the feedback that we're getting is really, really helpful. Great. Great. Thanks very much, Chris. Appreciate that. Um, so I guess, you know, certainly I don't want to cut the conversation short, but if it, it seems like we've covered everything at least for today. Um, I do want to kind of cover a few key dates for SWG members as well as talk a little bit about the next steps in particular with these public alert and warning symbols. So um, here you can see we've got our general timeline up that was for the phase three effort. So we are making a lot of progress very quickly on the current phase three, which ends at the end of September. Um, so today we're kind of on that group E call and we've got a variety of other efforts underway and, and we're moving ahead on, on target for folks. In terms of specifics for public alert and warning event symbols, we will be sending you guys a feedback form that will give you the chance to take another look at each of these individual symbols. Um, you can take a look at the treatments and provide feedback specifically on the standardized treatment on the color ramp. And then also we welcome feedback on the actual icons used. Uh, we were initially going to send that out immediately following today's call, but I think what I'd like to do is work with the team to make sure we incorporate some of the specific feedback that we've, re we've received so far um, into that and send you guys out an updated version um, a little bit later this week, hopefully by midweek um, to, to make some of those adjustments, for example, on the civil emergency. Um, so what we'll do is send that to you guys by email with an updated kind of due date out. I would say we're going to be a little bit tight on the timelines just in general, so we will provide about, you know, one full week for you guys to take a look at the feedback form and, and send over your input. Um, we really appreciate you guys taking another pass at this. Um, and providing some additional input that way as well. And then the other piece is that we were, are going to do a full call with all of the Symbology Working Group members, I think we're about 35 or so at this point, on June 17th at 3 p.m. So this is really going to be a great opportunity for you guys, if, if you haven't had an opportunity to look across everything that's been in development, to take a look at it um, and or provide any inputs, provide any kind of thoughts to help us refine this so that we can go to finalizing um, at, at all of the symbols that have been in development under the third phase three effort that obviously goes certainly well beyond the scope of public alert and warning. <laughs> um, so, but so we will be covering everything on that June 17th call. Um, so those are the kind of couple of key pieces of feedback and next steps. Um, I don't know, Chris, am I missing anything here? Anything else you guys want to mention in terms of the next steps? Uh, no, I'm all clear. I think you covered it all. And again, if you have examples of, of other treatments, feel free to put them in your feedback form. We do want to make sure that we hear from all of you. So can't thank you enough for that. Thanks, Chris. Um, I just have one uh, thing for you, Chris. Um, just one, I did notice that there was a list of resources where you gathered your information from, everything from the UN humanitarian aid to existing symbols, but just wanted to provide you with a few more resources would be, um, uh, I believe Red Cross did come up with a lot of these symbols um, that you could probably leverage or use or compare with. Red Cross and Canada Public Safety is very similar to what um, the Homeland Security Working Group has already. And lastly, probably uh, someone, um, the Noun Project, which has mm -hmm. a lot of resources as well from their store. So hopefully yes. those suggestions I can provide um, would help out with development. Or that, that is, 
that is very helpful. And, and Chris Rogers' group that are developing, and even Stephen's group with the um, the special events, they are reviewing all of those uh, sets as well on those root icons. So that's great to just foot stomp that to let us know we're moving in the right direction. Great, thank you. Yeah, Thank definitely. You. I know we have we have looked at the Canadian public safety set uh, quite extensively, um, as well as the noun set or uh, and a lot of the the icons out via noun. Um, the one that I haven't taken a look at, and I and, and Chris Rogers, you may have, um, but is the Red Cross set. So I don't know if anyone has a, a link to that or Hans, if you have that or know where we might be able to to find that, that would be really helpful for us. Yeah, I can provide. It. I think the Red Cross only came out with their symbols just for their mobile app. Okay. And it, and it wasn't really anything formal as icons or symbols, but they just kind of used it in order for people to recognize under under a mobile I, uh, application that if they are affected by a certain event, they click on that picture and it tells okay. them what to do in that scenario. Okay, excellent. Great. We'll definitely have to take a look at that. Oh, that's a definitely a valuable piece of input there. Thank you. And one of the other things that ties back to that I'll just leave you guys with is um, part of the work that Red Cross is doing on the mobile side is a lot of it is Android. And so Google has provided a design uh, guide for Android, and it really helps understand, you know, the perspective of an icon and the, the scale and the size and, you know, not just what just fits into the Android app, but just in general of the, the human interaction to that. So I know um, Red Cross is leveraging a lot of that in the guidelines that they're doing as well. But I was fascinated by how detailed um, that Android uh, design guide is. It is amazing. That's great. I'll definitely take a look at it. Thank you. Very That's pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. Excellent. Um, any questions from folks uh, with regards to the next steps? Um, great. I'm also just going to mention here, we have stood up a, um, a, a group, a symbology working group uh, within our AGOL environment. So the link is here. Um, I will also send this out as a part of the, um, the, the uh, follow-up from today's call, just so you guys know. It doesn't necessarily apply to everything we've been doing so far, but eventually it will. Um, so I just want to bring that to your attention. And last but not least, certainly, as you know, even if you have some feedback following today's call and that you just didn't mention for one reason or another, please feel free to shoot us an email. We really take everyone's input um, very uh, seriously throughout this process and, and, and really look to you all to make sure that we get this right. So thanks, everyone. Thank you. Excellent. Chris, you. anything, final remarks on your end? Um, just a tremendous thank you for all of you taking time out of your busy days to be a part of this process. We could not do this without you, so you're very key and important to this. Thank you so much uh, for participating. Excellent. Thanks, everyone. Um, and with that, have a great day, and look for some follow-up emails from us very shortly. Thanks, thank everybody.